Yeah, they're up my diesel cans. It's time to go and restock. Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees, Central Ohio beekeeper. A muddy mess is what we've got here in Central Ohio. Uh, it's crazy to think two weeks ago we were a negative 30 degrees and we stayed that way for I think five days, maybe four days. Seven days later, we climbed 90 degrees in one week's time and we made it into the 60s. That's, that's right, we changed to 90 degrees in one week's time. Kind of unreal, huh? Um, then we sit in the 60s for a few days and get some rain and now everything is serious mud. Especially if you've got to drive on any kind of sod, um, pasture, your yard, whatever it may be. Um, I've been battling some tire issues with the tractor. Um, so I've had to bring the tractor home pretty much daily just because the tire would go flat and I'd have to pump it up. This trail you see here comes right down to my shop where I would park it. And now I've got uh, some little cavities, trails I guess, sunken down into my yard I gotta fix. Wonderful. Anyway though, the tire is now fixed and I don't have to deal with that on a daily basis, which is a blessing. And I hope it stays that way. I've been battling tire issues for a good five months and they fixed it. This will be the third time. So hopefully it's actually fixed this time. Um, anyway, folks, hope your bees are doing well. Um, how did everyone um, do with the extreme cold? Did it even affect your area? I know I've seen that uh, parts of Texas even had some freezing temperatures and that was probably a real shell shock to them people down there, um, especially when it comes to their bees. Um, I got to thinking about that. That's funny or what's kind of ironic, I guess it's not funny, um, is during the summer, we northern beekeepers learn how to manage our bees in warm temperatures. Um, the people in the south, they also do the same. The one experience that the people in the south hardly ever get is to deal with being a beekeeper in cold weather. So kind of a unique situation for you southern folks. Um, so I guess maybe that's why you watch us northern folks so you can uh, be ahead of the game a little bit. Um, just some food for thought there, something to chew on, if you will. So I'd like to apologize for my absence. Um, it's been three or four weeks since I produced a video and, um, to be honest with you, it felt pretty good to spend some time with, with the family and to get away from the video creating a little bit. When you do this on a weekly basis and, uh, you do it for years on end, it, it gets to be a little overcoming at times, especially during the busy time of the season. And let me tell you, that's that's not now by any means, but um, it was nice to have uh, the holidays with the family and not have to rush to produce a video for that week. So uh, anyway, a little vacation was nice, but I now plan to be back on a weekly basis um, until I need a break and then I may take a week off. But uh, let's not, dwell on that too long and let's move right on along um, by this point um, you're watching this and it's the last day of the hive life conference but uh, i had several people ask me if i would be there and i'm going to go ahead and answer it in this video yep i was there i spent the whole time in the bathroom hiding um, so that's why you did not see me mingling out on the conference floor no i'm just kidding um, where i manage a farm um, outside of bees. I've got uh, grass-fed beef, um, free-range chickens and ducks. I've got Norwegian goats and uh, the chickens don't so much depend on me on a daily basis during the winter but the goats and the cows um, they do. I have to feed the cows daily and the goats. The chickens they free-range out here in the yard so you know they're not a big worry. I could probably leave them for a couple days and, and they wouldn't even know I was gone. The cows um, you give them about four or five hours into the day um, of me not showing up and they're definitely going to be complaining. And uh, here's the thing, you know, I have a hard time putting uh, my responsibilities in somebody else's hands. 
And the reason for that is, is um, that's how I make my bread and my butter, it's my farm. It's how I pay my bills. Um, it's, it's everything to me, um, my farm is, my animals, um, everything I've got going on. Um, I can't really sacrifice um, anything happening. So I feel that I'm best to keep that in my hands and not put it off on anybody else. Um, I know there's so, several people that are able to do that, but uh, for me that don't work. Um, so it is what it is. I'm here on the farm and uh, that's pretty much how it always is. I'm always home. <laughs> anyway, checking the bees. We had some warm days like I mentioned in the 60s the other day and uh, I did go around and check a few of the hives and I wanted to share that video clip with you. So check this out. Ah, oh, it quit raining. Got mud everywhere, but it's nice that it quit raining. It's still hard to believe that it's January when we're at 63 degrees. Just wanted to take a quick peek. I can see some bees flying. Let's see who's flying here. That little nuke's flying. Stands flying. Don't look too good for Sue. This colony, which is facing right into the weather, is flying. Look at that entrance disc. There's hardly any room for the bees to get out because of the dead bees blocking uh, the entrance. And they propolize this disc to the hive. So in order to turn it, here now let's knock some of these out of there. Let me use my knife. There we go. Now I am going to put it back on excluder. I do it like that. They got a little opening here they can get, get through in the corner. Yeah, we'll do it like that. So I want to check this colony here too. This one I didn't put an entrance reducer on and they're actually facing into the weather. Same with that one we just clued the entrance on. So, I'm pretty surprised that they're still flying. You think um, we just had that extremely cold blast blow through about two weeks ago and um, all that cold air, minus 30 degrees was blowing up in there. Bees are doing fine. Laybug, where's Moose? Moose. Moose. There's the Moosey boy. Laybug, what are you doing? Moose, come on. Ladybug, what are you doing? What are you foraging on, Ladybug? Huh? You guys are happy to get some sun too, huh? Some vitamin D. Moose is like, I gotta go see. It was obviously good. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's go see if the Apomate colonies are flying. Oh yeah, it's just a big nasty mess. There you go, good boy, Moose. Jumped right over that mess. And it goes, oh, dang near ripped my shoe off. So much suction in the mud. So we got bees flying there. And we got a few flying here. Or at least moving about, I should say. 
I mean, that's really good. Now the impressive part about this to me is, is I cut me a piece of foam insulation. If you remember how I set this up, I removed the, the top hive feeders and I cut me a piece of the one inch foam green insulation to lay in there as an inner cover. And I'm gonna be honest with you folks, I never got it on. And these bees facing right into the weather also. And the weather didn't affect them, even with it blowing up through these vents and then right down into the hive. Now, granted on my part, it would probably be a blessing to them if I would get that on there. And I'll do so now. But I wanted to experiment and uh, see what would happen if I didn't have anything up there. And as you can see, they seem to be handling it quite well. So you can see the bees doing pretty good. And that one that was facing into the wind, um, that, that really shocked me um, that they're still doing well. The same with the Apame that I've still not gotten the inner cover foam on. Um, they're still thriving. Um, I actually went and had and added another portion of uh, a Hive Alive fondant patty um, later that day. And uh, the cluster looks great. But I do need to get that foam in there. Um, uh, and other news, oh, this is a pretty exciting one, at least for me. Um, during Christmas, um, I got something pretty exciting that I wanted to share with you. I got me a, a 3D printer. It's, it's not top of the line by any means. It's an Ender 3, but uh, I'm pretty excited to have it. Um, if you go back through some of my videos, I've, I've done some videos on um, 3D printing and how a 3D printer can be used. Uh, to print beekeeping items like queen cages and and all kinds of entrances and entrance disc and I tell you it's just the possibilities are endless when it comes to 3d printing and it's not just for beekeeping um, household items um, just I'm telling you the possibilities are endless if you wanted to venture in to see what you could print with a 3d printer um, one site you could go over to is called Bing iverse thingiverse.com i believe and you can just go there and there's a search bar at the top and just type in a topic type in uh beekeeping type in uh type in bathroom you'll be surprised at the things you can print for your bathroom um kitchen just experiment with different terms in the search bar and, and you'll be overwhelmed at all the things that uh you can print but what i would like to do is uh you know why it's cold out and there's not a whole lot going on with the, with the bees is produce some videos on uh, 3d printing and maybe share how it would look as a novice starting out and learning more and getting better with printing so uh, I'd like to hear some feedback on what you think about that and you can leave that feedback down in the comments section um, right now I'm, I'm not by any means um, advanced at 3d printing it's brand new to me uh, I've been following it for a while but didn't have a printer well now I do and uh, I'm just amazed with all the stuff I can print and I'd like to be able to share that with you and maybe educate you in case you wanted to venture into the 3d printing world so uh, with that being said I think I've touched here on everything in my notes um, if you've got any questions or comments about anything I said, those can be left down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the thumbs up. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, be sure to click on that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Well, thanks for watching, folks. But uh, it's a little chilly out here. I think we're sitting at about 38 degrees. I keep seeing an occasional snowflake fly by here. I'm going to run up and top off these diesel cans and Get rid of some of my money. You have a good day, and man, better off have a good week. And we'll see you here next Sunday. Thanks for watching JC's Bees.